down your lane. Yeah, we get a little homie, you been getting some brain. Rapping about how you smoking weed like a chain. But I gotta be the one to throw the industry shade. Told you I've been fed up, get your bread up, you don't drop shit. Dropping so much fire, 2018, it's obnoxious. Put me on the 16, watch the numbers rise. Just went from the bubble to the. You are now tuned into the Dad to Live podcast. You have your host, Tyler Gata. I'm flying solo today. So. You guys know I've committed to a podcast every single week this year unless something crazy happens, uh, like I end up in the hospital or I'm deathly ill or there's circumstances out of my control. I'll kind of fall on a sword here on this one because we did not shoot a podcast last week. Um, Circumstances, I'm not going to say we're not out of my control because I own all my stuff, but um, as you'll see, um, our previous podcast manager is not here with me today. Um, we, we wish him nothing but the best moving forward. Um, but we, I decided to make a change, uh, for the show and for the podcast and go into a different direction, uh, moving forward, uh, with his services and with his working for dads who lift. So with that being said, I made that change last week. Again, we, we, we wish him nothing but the best moving forward. Just wasn't a good fit for us and, and where I want to take this podcast and the dads who lift brand. Um, and, uh, I think this would be better for everybody moving forward, but, uh, with that being said, it took me a week to kind of regroup, um, get uh, a new uh, media director hired, um, which uh, I actually was able to hire Laurel, which worked with us before. A lot of you guys have probably heard her on older podcasts um, with the last production company that I, I went through. She was the one that actually shot most of our podcasts, and she was amazing to work with. Um, so I brought her on full time as media director here for Dad to Lift. Um, So I'm very excited about what is going to come in the future, not only with our podcast, but with our posting, with our reels, with our content. So stay tuned to that. Um, Just just wanted to get everybody kind of caught up. And I do apologize for not having a podcast out last week. We should be back on track, should be moving forward with the podcast every single week um, going forward. So we're also working on a lot of different things like uh, getting a bunch of guests on. We want to, we want to be featured on a lot of people, a lot of other people's podcasts and we want people to come on our podcast. So if anybody's listening that, that has any connections to anybody that would like to come on our podcast um, or, or would like to have us on their podcast, we're definitely open to that. Um, you can reach me at Tyler at dad to lift official.com. Um, and, and we'll move forward with, with that process. So, all right, guys. Again, we do this stuff for free. Please give us a like, share, five-star review. Um, that's that's our fee, if you will. Um, all the content's free. Everything we share is free. Our Facebook group's free. All that we do is ask for your support and give us a like, share, five-star review. Share it on your Instagram. Share it on your Facebook. Share our Apple podcast. Share our YouTube. Subscribe. You know, you tell a friend. They tell a friend. That's how we grow this thing. I want to grow it organically. We do not have any ads. I don't have any paid ads. I hate that shit. Can't stand it when people do that stuff and you listen to a podcast and every 15 minutes, there's a fucking two minute ad. I'm not going to do that to you guys. <clears throat> if, so if we added value to you um, at all, please give us a like, share, five star review. We have apparel. I'm wearing the Dad to Lift hoodie right here. Um, Dad to Lift hat. We have brand new apparel that's on our website, Apparel. We're on IG as Dad to Lift Apparel. We're on Facebook as Dad to Lift Apparel. That's changed. Uh, Facebook is now Dad to Lift Apparel. And then we have a Facebook group that has 53,000 like-minded dads and growing. If you are a like-minded dad trying to be your best self and stay fit at the same time, check that group out. It's called Dad to Lift Official, and that is a Facebook group on Facebook. Um, you guys will have to kind of <clears> – I'll <throat> oh, apologize up front. I've got a little bit of a head cold here today. And I've been fighting it all week, so um, I'll do my best to get through this and be as clear as I can. So – I have something really cool to happen this week within one of my companies. And I wanted to share it with you guys because I think it speaks volumes for, uh, I just think it's a really cool lesson. It was a really cool lesson for my guys. Honestly, it was a really cool lesson for myself moving forward. So I had a client, we've been working on a pool design with him, a quarter million dollar backyard pool design with him. Oh, for the past like three weeks and everything's going great. We're trying to fit within a budget um, we have multiple meetings, tweak designs, which, you know, you very regularly do in the, in the industry when you're, you know, designing a backyard pool and, um, everything's going great. Everything's going great. Everything's going great. He's very respectable, great guy, um, great client. You know, his, his wife loves us. He loves us. Um, we're getting all the right vibes and, um, it comes down to basically our last meeting where he's, you know, the, the bids in between us and one other contractor. 
And it comes down to this last meeting where everything's still feeling good. Everything's feeling all right. And, um, but we have a, a little bit of a price drop, a little bit of a budget that we have to meet and get down to. And it's a very tight line to get what he wants into this budget. So we bust our asses, we redesign, tweak some things, we hit the number. And um, long story short, this guy's a contractor in a different state. He just moved back to Omaha, so he's not a contractor here, but that's what he did. Um, he throws us a curveball and says, well, to be honest with you, I didn't have very many connections when I first started. I have a little bit more connections now. I'm thinking about doing it myself. And this is all on, on a phone call and then through text the night before we're supposed to meet to show this final you know, revision that we busted our asses on. And he basically tells us like, hey, I'm sorry, but we're not going to go with you. And um, uh, we, we put a lot of work into this job, a lot of effort into this job. And, and you don't win them all. And I don't win them all. But we, we win a lot. And we take pride in our work. And, we, um, and, and my guys do, too. And we take pride in the value that we give and the relationships that we build. And so it was a hard hit for us. And um, I talked to him and I said, um, I'll just call him Mike because I'm not going to use his real name. Um, but I talked to him and I said, Mike. We spent a lot of time on this revision, a lot of time getting down to your budget. I think you're going to be really impressed. I know you told, I know you said you're not going to go with us. I know you said you're going to do it on your own. Will you just hear us out tomorrow morning? And, and he came back re respectfully and said, Hey, um, I just don't want to waste any more of your time. It's very likely that, I, that we're not going with you, you know, basically telling me to go pound sand, like, Hey, I've already told you no. And I said, all I, the only question I have to ask you is if we come tomorrow morning, and again, he was not available the next morning at a time slot that was convenient for us. So coming to this time slot, the, the only time slot he was available that next morning meant that I had to move my day and my schedule around in pre-meetings that I already had. So it wasn't like a convenient thing for me. And But we had a lot of time and effort in on this. And I, I asked him, I said, listen, Mike, this is my one question. If we come tomorrow morning and we present this to you, is there a chance that you could go with us? Is there a chance? All I need is one little chance. And he said, well, there's always a chance. And I said, all right, well, that's all I need. If there's a chance, we'll be there. I moved my meetings around. I rescheduled my day. I got my guys over there. They're calling for snow here also right around this time frame. So we're, we're scrambling, trying to get ready for snow removal. And uh, we got over to the job. We presented our design. We absolutely fucking killed it. We presented our estimate and we sold the fucking job. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's not the most expensive job I've ever done. Um, and it's, it's not the most intricate job I've ever done, but this is definitely probably going to be the most meaningful job that I've ever done because nine times out of 10 for most people. And even myself, when you're told, no, I just cut the cord and move on to the next one. Right. And, with how much I have going on this week, every week, how busy I am. I'm, I'm planning my birthdays this week, so I'm taking a trip this weekend. There's just so much shit. We had the snow coming. There was so much shit that I had to do that week. It would have been very easy for me to say, and, and I'm not struggling for money. It's not like, hey, this is make or break if I don't get this job, right? We already have work lined up. It would have been very easy for me to say, fuck it, I'll move on to the next one, right? It would have been very easy for me to say like, Man, I, I don't want to put in, oh, this is another thing. When he had told me that that night before that he wasn't going to use us and I had asked for the opportunity, we had the design redone, but I didn't even have the numbers redone. So I still had to spend an extra couple hours that next morning getting the numbers ready before I even made it to that meeting that I had to readjust my day for. So it was a lot of extra work. So it would have been way, way easier for me to just say, fuck it and move on. Way easier for me to say, hey, you know, you don't win them all, right? Move on. But what I decided to do, I just had a feeling and I had to go with my gut, but what I decided to do was I decided to not only bet on myself and go all in on myself and trust myself, but I decided to bet on my team and go all in on my team and trust my team. And we ended up winning. We ended up getting the job. It's an amazing job. Again, not the biggest, most, most intricate job I've ever installed or sold or designed, but it's going to be the most meaningful and the most impactful. And he even said when he hired us, when they make the, made the decision that next day, he even said, man, you know, one of the main reasons that I decided to pull the trigger and change my mind to go with you is, is because I basically told you no, 
and you were persistent and you said, Hey, you know, you asked for that one chance. And he goes, Any, anybody that asked me for one chance, I'm, I'm, I'm going to respect that. And he goes, that shows your character and your team's character and how much you believe in your team and your capabilities right there. Cause most people would just turned around and walked away. But I knew that what we had could not be beaten. Even, even for him doing it in himself, it couldn't have been beaten. So if there's that one chance, I'm going to go in on that, on that chance, bet on myself, bet on my team, and I'm going to do whatever I can to make that, that happen in that dream of reality. And the way that I see this and why this is such a cool lesson for me, and I wanted to share it for you guys, it was a cool lesson for my team too, but this can be applied to every area of your life. We always have obstacles that come in the way of things that we're trying to do in places we're trying to be, right? We have a dream life over here. We're not yet there yet. We're trying to get to it. There's always things that come in our way. There's always people that tell us no. There's always opportunities that shut down. There's always doors that close. There's always things that stop us, right? But the, the key is and the trick is, is that you can never stop moving no matter what. Even if this didn't work out in my favor and I didn't win the job, right? It still would have been a, in my mind, the right thing to do because I gave it my all. At least when I, at least when I walked away from that job and didn't get it, I could have said, okay, I did every single fucking thing in my power to get that job. Every single thing, nothing. If I wouldn't have gone to that meeting, which would have been the easiest thing for me to do right. And that time I never would have known. Then it would have been in the back of my head the whole time. Like, man, maybe we could have got that job, right? And this goes to parenting. This goes to your relationships. This goes to your fitness. This goes to everything. It goes to business. It goes to anything that you want in your life. I made a post, and this ties into it. I made a post a few days ago, and I talked about entrepreneurs being dreamers. And I talked about people waiting and people waiting for the right moment or the right time or I got these plans, man. I got these plans. 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 I got these big, intricate fucking plans, right? Once I get these big, fucking, intricate plans together, then I'll move forward and I'll win. You're never going to win. You can have as many fucking plans as you want, but if you don't take action and move on a daily basis, you will never get there. If you cannot execute, you will never make things a reality. Ever. There could be a guy that has half your fucking talent, half your fucking skill, half your fucking plan, but he actually takes action every day and he'll get to the place before you do. That's just the truth. So more of this story for me is always bet on yourself and always keep moving no matter what. If somebody else can do it, you can do it. If somebody else can have it, you can have it. It's actually funny. So when I, when I post um, to our group, I post to our Dads Who Lift official group of 53,000 guys, and I'll, I try to make posts daily. And I post to the group. When I post to the group, I always like my picture, my own picture that I post. And this is not a fucking like people may look at it and say like, oh, man, he's arrogant. He's full of himself. It's not an arrogant, full of myself thing. One of the deals is, is it, hey, sometimes you got to get the ball rolling. You know, a group of 53,000 guys, not everybody, no one wants to be the first one, right? So a lot of times if you like it, they see a like, it gets the ball rolling, they start liking it. And then you can share your message, which ultimately is what I'm trying to do. I don't give a fuck about the like. I give a fuck about the motivational message and the life that I'm trying to change, which ultimately, ultimately that's what I want to bring. But uh, there's a guy that commented and he didn't mean any ill will. He's actually a, a, a buddy of mine that wants to do our coaching program, but um, he commented and he said, I love how you like your own posts and with a laugh face. And I replied back and I just said, hey, man, if I don't believe in me, who will? And that's what I'll leave you guys with. If you don't believe in you, who will believe in you? Because I'm telling you right now, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will either. If you don't believe you can have that job, you're not going to get it. If you don't believe you can't, you can't sell that job or you, I'm sorry, if you don't believe you can sell that job, you won't. So go all in on yourself. Never stop. Always keep moving. Bet on yourself. Believe in yourself. If you don't, who will? I'm sorry. Yeah. If you never do, who will? 
If you don't bet on yourself, if you don't believe in yourself, who will? And that's what I'll leave, leave you guys with today. Uh, next week, we should, ha- um, we should have Jonathan Baumgartner on here with me. Um, we'll have a very cool uh, podcast and topic set up for that for next week. Uh, we will be having more guests come on too, so you guys stay tuned. Again, I apologize for not getting one out last week. We will be consistent moving forward. Um, I already explained that whole deal, so it is what it is. All the changes that have happened will be better for everybody moving forward, um, and I truly believe that, and that's what we're betting on and, and the direction we're heading. So thank you guys for tuning in to the Dads Who Live podcast. Um, again, I'm your host, Tyler Gata. Please give us a like, share, five star review. If you got any uh, added value out of that, a laugh, a smile, anything, please give us uh, a like, share, five star review. You tell a friend, they tell a friend, they tell a friend. That's how we grill this thing. I don't want to run ads. I'm not going to do that shit. Just please help us out. Do us a solid. We are on. Uh, we have all of our apparel on the website www.dadsofapparel.com. We are on IG as Dad Soft Apparel, Facebook Dad Soft Apparel, and we have a Facebook group. Fifty three thousand like minded dads trying to be their best selves and stay fit. If that's something that interests you, that's a group on Facebook called Dads Who Lift Official. Bet on yourself, guys. Believe in yourself. Don't ever stop moving. They tell me that like when I get cocky. Ain't it funny how they think they can stop me? Try to be mean, but I'm so sorry you not me. Try to be mean.